Everyone knows if you keep adding a bunch of positive numbers forever, you'll go out to infinity. Except that's not actually true in every case. Calculus students learn about sums that look like this, known as convergent series. We're adding up infinitely many positive numbers, but they actually converge to a finite value. And this is just my first example on this frustrating list of mathematical theorems that seem obvious, but are actually false. Knowing that previous fact might lead you to conclude if we have one of these so-called convergent series, an infinite list of numbers summing to a finite value, that you can rearrange the terms of that sum and end up with the same result. After all, one of the first things you learn in algebra is commutativity of addition, that the order in which you add numbers doesn't matter. Well, that's true for a finite list of numbers, but we actually have the Riemann rearrangement theorem, which says that if a sum is conditionally convergent, you can rearrange the terms to make it converge to essentially whatever you want. Since our example only converges if each term is not in absolute value, we call this conditionally convergent. And if I start rearranging the order of these terms, we can make it sum into whatever we want. We can make it converge to any number or even diverge. You know that shapes with finite volume have to have finite surface area. I mean, that's obvious, right? Well, maybe not. This is the famous Gabriel's horn generated by the function 1 over x. It's often given to calculus students and is a great counterexample to this theorem. We can use improper integrals to show that the volume of this object is finite, yet its surface area is infinite. You can sort of intuitively justify this to yourself by taking a cylinder of clay. If you roll the clay up so it has half the diameter it did, you still have the same amount of clay, the same amount of volume. But then it would be four times as long, and hence twice the surface area. And if you were somehow able to continue this process ad infinitum, the volume would remain constant, while the surface area would grow arbitrarily large. Every single natural number can be put in the numerator of a fraction, and every single natural number can be put in the denominator of a fraction. That's a whole lot of combinations. And so clearly, there are way more fractions, rational numbers, than there are natural numbers. Well, that's not actually true. What exactly do you mean more numbers in one set than the other? I think we can both agree there are an infinite number of both of them, but it sure feels like there are more fractions than there are natural numbers. A mathematician might look for a bijection between the two sets, essentially looking for a way we can pair up every single element of both sets. If every element from both set had one partner, then there would be just as many elements in each set, and they would have the same cardinality, the same size. Well, here's a very fun way to do it, laying these out in a grid. Just assign 1 to the first number, 2 to the second number, 3 to the third, in this pattern going out, and you'll see that every single natural number can be assigned to a positive rational number. Thus, they are actually the same size set and there are not more rational numbers than natural numbers. So now when I say there are just as many natural numbers as there are numbers in the interval 0 to 1, that's got to be a true obvious statement. Except when we do the so-called Cantor diagonalization argument. These two sets have the same size, the same number of elements, if we can match up every single element pairwise. Let me try to do that. Let me create a list matching the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on out to infinity with every single number between 0 and 1. Here's my list. Except I'm going to create a new number with the first decimal of the first number, the second decimal of the second number, the third decimal of the third number, and so on forever. This number is not on the list because it's not the first number. 
it's not the second number, it's not the third number, and so on. We've created a number which is in the set 0 to 1, but not on the list. This set is uncountably infinite. And in a sense, there are more numbers between 0 and 1 than there are natural numbers. When you look at complex numbers, numbers involving i, the imaginary unit, adding or subtracting two of them, typically combining them in any way, produces another complex number. So certainly looking at something like i to the power of i, that's just gotta be complex, right? It has to have some imaginary part. It turns out, actually, that this number is a real number. So just because you're combining complex numbers, doesn't mean the result will be complex. But here's a really obvious one. 0.9 is less than 1. 0.99 is less than 1. 0.999 is less than 1. 0.999 repeating forever is also less than 1. I can feel the controversy brewing already, but I will stand on this fact that these numbers are equal and I will prove it to you in this video. This is a definitive video, in my opinion, with a rigorous proof. Click the video to check it out. I'll see you in that one.